jävla fitta. Okej, okay. Swedish word of the day. Anus. Because that's what I am right now. Because I didn't put on the microphone, okay? Good. Okay, let's just start everything over. Fuck, this new year is oh, amazingly positive. Okay, I'm gonna try again. Guys! Oh. What's up everyone and welcome to FAQ number 7... Number. What's up everyone and welcome to FAQ number 70! A little too positive, okay. FAQ 70. What's up guys and welcome to FAQ number... number what's wrong with my English? Guys, what's up and welcome to my FAQ 70. The first one of 2019. Yay! Good year, good year. I'm, I'm having good feelings about uh, uh, this year. It's coming here. In the latest FAQ, I shared a little bit about the importance of my daughter's birthday. And I just want to say that after that video, a lot of you guys, you posted in the comments with your stories, with their real life situations and you know, and just sharing their moments when they, their lives got, you know, turned upside down or whatever. I thank you so much for your comments and I see a lot of people are liking the comments, reading the comments and just getting inspired. I just want to say, guys, I'm super proud about you guys being real. And, uh, you know, it feels like, you know, it makes me really proud to have followers here like you. And, uh, you know, a lot of YouTubers, they have a lot of trolls as followers. So, there's that. Oh. 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 Ah. I just had an epiphany. Is that what you call it? Uh, a epiphany. A, a epiphany. I don't know. Anyway, I just got an idea. Maybe you guys are the YouTubers and I'm the troll. Huh? Huh? It's not that bad. Ole England, the uh, horse whisperer. Yes. Okay, first question. Shit, I need to uh, chill a little bit. FAQ 70, 1st of 2019. Let's go. Uh, where? Mr. Oblivious, forget PewDiePie, sub to Ola. I'm not gonna leave a huge comment about my life, but I will say that you are a major inspiration to me. The way you grab life by the balls and you got what you wanted out of life gives me hope for the long future ahead of me. Also, your speeches never fail to impact me in some way. Oh, ooh. My speeches never fail to impact me. Like, it's gonna be dirty, because FEQ, you know, you stick dicks in your mouth and, you know, puss this in your ass and whatever you... Oh, anyway, I saw in this latest FEQ that there was a lot of comments like this, you know, and people letting me know that uh, I inspired them. And that that's really inspirational for me as well. I don't know how many times I can uh, say the word inspiration or inspire, but it's very important to hear from you that uh, I inspire you because that inspires me to do better and continue doing what I do. So, thank you so much, Mr. Mr. Oblivious. Amil Agarwal, why you weren't included in the world's greatest collab video by Jared Dines? I, I saw the video was posted and I was like, oh, okay, it's fine. They didn't ask me, it's okay. You know, no hard feelings, Jared Dines, it's fine. You didn't ask me. But then <laughs> uh, I checked on Twitter Feared SE, shoot me a DM. And since I do not use Twitter that often, who the fuck uses Twitter anyway? I missed a call, obviously. Well, there you go. Next year, perhaps. <laughs> Max Cobb, zero free. Ola, I'm debating whether or not to buy your album. You asshole. You know, you should just take my word, buy the album, and uh, make me happy. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, you said it's gonna be chill, so now I don't know if you're going to be doing some electronic beats or full blown metal record. Could you please reply with what type of music is to be expected? Can we expect some Pantera inspired songs? They could meet the difference of you making 45 euros. So, shit, okay, I'm on the line here. It's not electronic music. I mean, it's, you know, drums, electric guitar, bass, solos. And it's basically, if you ever heard like Solar Part 1 uh, on my YouTube channel, Solar Part 1 will be featured uh, and uh, redone on this album. Solar Part 1 will be on the album. If you heard that, you know what to expect. It's just a lot of everything, basically. And uh, there's a bunch of other songs. There are, I think, two like real metal songs. But it's still very chill, very relaxed and... Uh, a little different from what you uh, might have heard from me before. So I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, releasing the first single for you guys. I'm not sure when that's gonna happen, but, uh, you know, I'm trying to wrap shit up here. And uh, hopefully when this FAQ is being aired, I'm done with everything. But I don't know, you know, I'm so stressed right now. Uh, uh, I'm just getting stressed out thinking about it. And uh, this this light here is making me sweat like hell. Should I, yeah. 
dust off, you know, for dusting off shit. Oh, that actually worked. It's just, it's just air. Okay, good. Air on can. I uh, hope you buy the album. Buy it here. David Am, hello, hello. Uh, is there a musical difference between the Haunted and Fear bands? It all sounds very similar to my ears, but maybe there are important differences that I could learn to appreciate. If it actually is all the same, please combine them into a massive feared haunted band so I can listen to all my favorite Ola songs in the concert. Ooh, thanks. Well, um, I think if you if you listen to the latest two haunted albums where I've written a fair bit amount of music, you can probably hear that it's you know it's me writing the song. So that you're hearing similarities, that I understand because you know it's it's still metal, you know. And it's basically just tuned a little bit different. Feared is more down-tuned, while The Haunted is more in standard D and stuff like that. So, there is a difference for sure, but, uh, you know, it's still just metal. You know, generic, boring metal that, uh, wow, really selling myself in a good way there. 2019 Ola. Did you see my shirt? Uh, a lot of people complain that I, you know, you should not be able to use uh, your own merch. Well, fuck you, it's 2019, I wear my Ola England t-shirt because all my other clothes was in the dryer. Ugh. Living on strings, you said you always read all comments, but you never answered my question in any of your FAQs. I've been asking you for a while, have you ever heard of any Indian male band ex demonic dis resurrection cryptos? Okay, let's... Why do I have this on? Oh, oh shit, okay. I'm not even sure you can see that. Maybe I have to do a manual gaming thing here and it'll suck, but... Okay, uh, what was the question? Oh, okay, listen to a song. Ola reacts to Indian Mel. Amazing, amazing. Okay, Cryptos. Wow, they're sitting there rocking on the uh, sidewalk there. Oh. What's happening? Oh my god, did he just kick that can? Skip the long intros, man. <laughs> Every song on my new album has intros, by the way. <laughs> so I should shut up for a second. Wow. Actually a cool song, and now I'm happy because now I've listened to Indian Mel Bands. Kryptos, great. Ramrod, what's cracking old dog? Kind of generic question, but what certain riff of or song would you say you enjoy to play the most in your off time, just practicing or warming up? Also, just want to say I enjoy what you're doing here. More artists should break that wall between them and their fans like you have these videos and responding to our questions. Much love, bro. If y'all ever come to estate side my area, I'll pay for the beers after the show. Shit. You know, I've gotten this question before and I've been thinking a little bit of like, you know, what riff do I play for soundcheck for instance, like when I'm out soundchecking with the Haunted or whatever. Uh, there is like one riff that I usually play that I never play anywhere else. I don't think I've ever played it in a video, maybe when I did like a playthrough of a song, but it's actually from a Six Feet Under song called uh, uh, Seed of Filth. So the riff goes like this and we'll make this the riff of the day by the way, so. And if that does not grow you a pair of balls, then I cannot help you, you're probably a female subscriber. So, very simple riff, and I won't change my camera, I just, just do it like this, you know, knock my guitar into the desk. So it's like this, uh, this is in D, but I guess the song is like in C or something like that, but it's very easy, but very manly. Check this out. Oops, there it is. Riff of the... Uh, riff of the... Shut up, Ola. Peter Wallner. Hey, Ola, it seems that you're interested in talking about politics since all the sarcastic socialist calls in your video. Are you afraid that if you give your politics view, you're gonna divide your audience and lose subscribers? I won't go either way. Cheers. You know, I usually say that I don't like to talk about politics in my video, but in the latest FAQ, I kind of like made a sarcastic uh, comment in there. And now, because it's the internet, everyone thinks that I hate socialism and socialists. <laughs> uh, and it's like, uh, and that's the main reason why I don't like to share my uh, 
you know, politic views because people just take what I say and wrap it into something else and uh, creating fake news. Gus Elders, uh, hey Ola, any plans on doing guitar clinics anywhere? Asia, Europe, please do clinics since we require your knowledge. A turn... Uh, Ola, I might have something planned, but uh, right now I don't think I have anything that's booked. But I do have a couple of uh, clinics in mind uh, for the future and 2019, but I don't know the details yet. But I'm definitely looking forward to doing more clinics because they're... Uh, I think I might actually enjoy it more than playing live in front of a big audience because uh, it's a very amazing experience for me to just meet with people and uh, you know meet you guys basically and that's why I really enjoy doing that because you know when I play with the haunted you know festivals and all it's impossible to meet people I can go out but it's it's an uncontrolled environment and uh, I'd rather do the clinics and just you know hang at a bar you know, talk to you guys and take pictures and whatever. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to doing more clinics. Bye. Legendary K4. Rate my potential setup. Solar A2.6 carbon matte black into Boss Katana 50. I don't play live, just at home. Is there any other amp around that price you would suggest? Or is the Katana 50 good enough? What else would you get with it, if anything at all? Pedals. Do you think you need some noise gate? Uh, Boss Katana 50. It's a great choice. When someone asks me uh, what they should get for like a home setup or whatever, if they're not playing live, you just want something that sounds good and, you know, just uh, plays good at home. I usually tell them to get a Katana amplifier. I'm not sponsored or endorsed or anything like that by Boss or Roland. I just like how easy they are. They sound good. They take pedals really well. And it's... Right now, I think one of the quickest and best ways to find a good solid metal sound at home. And uh, if you want to buy something new to, you know, change things up, I think you should get an overdrive pedal um, and uh, shove it into the Boss Katana 50 uh, just to get a different sound going. But uh, I think you would go, you know, a long way with the 50 as it is. Uh, I bought one for my dad and, you know, it can do all the old guy stuff. Old guy stuff. I'm gonna get shit for that. It can do all the blue stuff. Not old guy stuff. Tihi Lawrence. Hola. Can you review the Digitech drop pedal? I think I have and I'm gonna link it here and you can uh, watch it yourself. Okay? Tihi. Tyler Gayhart. Hey Ola, if you get to this comment and it makes the next FAQ, I want to know what inspired you to start solar guitars and how much of a struggle was it to design your own guitar line? Designing my own guitar line, I did that before I started solar guitars. Uh, when I designed get, uh, the solo guitar for uh, for Washburn, for instance, and uh, then the reason to start your own brand. I mean, look at what I'm doing right here. I'm building my own brand, you know, with my YouTube channel, my bands, and you know, my whole persona surrounding social media and whatnot. It does makes the absolute sense for me to have my own guitar brand. You know, there's a lot of guitar brands out there, but there is none that is aimed straight for me, I think, or me as a guitar player. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, you know, I'm a metal guy and, you know, I want to create metal guitars that are, uh, you know, aimed for people that love metal. That's my idea right there. I just wanted to create something that I believe in because I think that what I believe is a good guitar. I think a lot of people share that opinion. So I think it made a lot of sense for me to start solar guitars and uh, look and see, it actually made sense. So I'm very happy. Thank you for the question. 666. Hey, all, I love your vids. I'm a fairly new subscriber and I'm watching your backlog of FAQs and just watch your Tristram cover. Very nice. Any chance of a remake with your beautiful, uh, beautiful face and maybe some tab? Oh, thank you so much for commenting on my beautiful face. It will probably not happen because uh, it took a lot of work, I remember. If you want to check it out, I'm going to link it up here. Oh, hola, the linker. I'm linking a lot today and my English is perfect. Perfect English linker. Hola, English linker. John Hayer. Oh, you have tattoos. I as well have tattoos. Oh, we should hang out. Oh, yes. Great idea. Let's meet uh, at that bar. And uh, all the people who uh, have tattoos can go there. See you there. Uh, Iron Cave. Uh, next FAQ, favorite distortion pedal and thoughts on Jim Dunlop signature wah pedals. Oh, uh, favorite distortion pedal, I think for this year, it's the Rev G4 
pedal of this year. It's 2019, okay, I'm a little bit early to say that, but okay, the last 2018 year, my favorite distortion pedal was the Rev G3 pedal, okay? And uh, thoughts on Jim Dunlop Synod Wah pedals. Amazing pedals, I love them. I've had my John Petrucci Wah for maybe like two and a half years, and uh, as you can see, it's still there holding my uh, screen really, really well. And it's been doing so for for uh, uh, two years maybe, since I got this desk. So yeah, love, love, love their stuff. Amazing for screens. No, it's actually a really good pedal. It's just that it's uh, I cannot use it because it's holding up my screen. <laughs> hey Ola, can you tell which country has the most subscribers? I'm Patrick Stoltman. Okay, let's check. On YouTube, okay. Holy shit, okay, I cannot watch how many subscribers, I think, but here's the watch time at least, and you, as you can see, the United States is, uh, wow, it's 31%, which is, uh, oh, that's for the guy that was unsubscribing to my channel right there. Holy, okay, Sweden is at, at uh, fifth place, I like that. Let's go Swedes! For not being that big of a country, that's, uh, that's a lot of, uh, oh, maybe that's me, by the way. <laughs> okay, Brazil, Australia, Russia, oh, well, Great. A lot of females in the US and as you can see in the United Kingdom, Canada and Sweden and uh, Germany, only males. I have to work that up. What's what's up? What's up with that zero? I don't know. Russia 1.1%. Ooh, Russia. What's up? Creeping up like that. Sirab, thank you all, I love your stuff. Question for you, as a fellow metal dad, how do you feel about your kids listening to metal? I get some crap for it, but I'm interested to know where you stand on exposing your kids to more of the harsh elements in life. Playing metal at home and playing metal in front of my kids is normality, or it's normal at least, so for them, you know, it's not, it's not aggressive or anything like that, it's, it's, oh, it's what's being played at home, so who the hell cares? Anyway, I mean, exposing my kids to metal, it's not like they're gonna go and shoot someone. At least I hope so, <laughs> but you, you know what I'm saying. I mean, it's a normality for them. I think they're not damaged by it. Why would it? It's just music, you know? Ola, you should make a new series where you review subscriber songs and mixes if you haven't already. Ah, great. Uh, I'm actually doing this if you're a subscriber. Uh, no, not a if you're a member to my channel. I do this in my live streams I have every now and then. So if you want to hear it, and uh, hear your uh, band being uh, reviewed by me, become a member. And see on uh, yesterday, I had a live stream yesterday. Luca Struna, oh, well, you never answer my question, so please answer mine next time. I was curious if you watch, wife watches your videos and if you have ever met anyone from Opeth. Yes, my wife watches a little bit of my videos because uh, nowadays she edits some of them because she's the one that uh, makes the initial editing of my FAQ videos. So there's that. And uh, I hope and think that she enjoys what I'm doing or, uh, yeah, I, she, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing right now. Met Opeth, yes, of course I met Opeth, because they're Swedes and I'm a Swede, so I met him a bunch of time. I actually had took a couple lessons from uh, from Fredrik Åkesson back in the day. So there you go, small world. Stu Ingram, hey Ola, just wondering where you get your 3ST and if you have advice on where to get amazing guitars like that. Uh, I bought mine from eBay, it was in a rough condition, but uh, I was lucky at the time that I was with Washburn and they had their custom shop open, so I bought it on eBay, sent it to the custom shop, and Chewy, the guy who did all the dime bag finishes, he uh, he fixed the guitar, he uh, repaired some of the damages and repainted the guitar. So uh, now it's in mint condition, right there. They're really expensive now, I've, I've seen the like if they're in a good condition, they're like six thousand bucks or something like that. It's stupid. I bought mine for a lot cheaper because it was, you know, damaged, and I knew I could, you know, save it. So there you go. Hello, La. Have you ever done anything awesome like go bass fishing, mountain biking, or take a lion dancing class? Uh, all those things that you mentioned sounds like absolute boring bullshit. So no, I did not. Uh, mountain biking, maybe I could probably do that, but uh, fishing, oh, sounds like uh, a lot of waiting. Don't like that. S. Bake. Hey Ola, do you know of or have you met John Brown of Monuments? Legends say he's never done an upscrote. Upscrote. <laughs> upscrote. Great. So let it be said, John Brown of Monuments has never done an upscrote. You heard it first. 
at allonews.com. Uh, yes, I have met uh, John Brown uh, a fair bit of times. Amazing rhythm guitar player. I actually did a guest solo on his album that I'm actually pretty proud of. So you can check that out over here. Ola the Linker comes back for more. Brian Beamers, no edit on the F-bombs. Demonized. Demonized? Oh shit, I think it was uh, saying demonetized, but yeah, I just don't, you know, I, it takes a lot of work editing all my fucks out, so I'm just gonna keep on saying fuck and not, I hope it's okay with you guys, hope I'm not losing too many subscribers, I just gained one, huh? Hola, what happened to your tribal ink on your left arm? Oh, but my man, it's still here, look, look. Froggington Post. Hey Ola, how did you develop such a good English being Swedish? And any relatives spoke it at home or just self-taught? Uh, they teach Swedish. Oh, good that they teach Swedish, by the way, because I'm a Swede, it's, it's important. No, but they teach English from like second grade in school uh, in Sweden, which is kind of early, I guess. And uh, I also played a lot of games when I was a kid. You know, I, I could probably thank Monkey Island 1 and 2 uh, for, uh, you know, I had no idea what it said there, but I watched the words so much and you just try... You know, when you don't know English and you play Monkey Island and you have to do all the dialogue and you know, all the answers and all, you... You know, at some point you just learn what, look, what words look like and, uh, you know, my brother can help me out with some things and, you know... So, thanks to video games and uh, a good Swedish school, I learned English. And uh, there you go. Oh, that was the last question. Oh, England, the English error. So there you go, that was FAQ number 70, first of 2019, and uh, I have a good feeling about 2019. It's gonna be uh, an amazing year. On all accounts. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I have a dream uh, for 2019. I'm not sure if I'm able to do it, but I'm gonna let you know what my dream is for 2019. You know, I live in this apartment right with my family on a very, very expensive island in Sweden. And, uh, you know, one of my dreams has always been to to own my own house, you know, and, you know, have, have some greenery and, you know, have my kids run outside, you know, you know, blowing shit up on the, on the yard or whatever. I'm never going to be able to buy a house here on this island because it's just super expensive. But I don't want to move from this island because you know my kids go to school here and you know it's a good island I grew I grew up on this island and I love it you know my wife did as well I love my room here I love my apartment but you know I still want to own a house so one thing I will do for 2019 I think is that I will check for some kind of you know a summer house or something like that outside of Stockholm that I can actually afford, because it is a lot of money here in Sweden, and especially here where I live, to buy a house. So I'm looking for hopefully to see if I can save some money to uh, get a small little cottage somewhere. Uh, I think that's my dream for 2019. I don't know, hopefully I'll do it. And hopefully people like you will buy my album and uh, support the cost of me buying a cottage. Do you have a dream for 2019? Let me know in the comment section. Let's just uh, engage a little bit, okay? And guys, like always, if you have any questions, please post them in the comment section. And uh, yeah, again, you guys are awesome. I can't say it enough, basically, but you guys are awesome. And I appreciate that. I appreciate you guys being here. You know, there's actually a moment where I uh, sit and go through all the comments in the, FAQ, in the past FAQ to find questions. And, you know, it makes me really happy and proud about you guys when I uh, read through the comments. It's, uh, it's really something. You guys are amazing. Just want to say that. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. See you next week. No, I'll probably make a, a video on Tuesday or something like that. Okay, bye, see you.